Hello, I'm Kevin Kelly, and welcome back to the Buzz Bubble, where we pick the brains of great minds in advertising. This week, we get into the head of the George Lois, a pioneer in the creative revolution of the 1960s and genius behind such brands as the original Volkswagen Beetle, Xerox, Tommy Hilfiger, ESPN, I Want My MTV, and of course, his genius cover artwork with Esquire magazine. We may stray from topics of advertising, but you'll be thoroughly entertained as George educates us on everything from the big idea, creating shocking advertising, and sliding into second base. Now, we pick up before the interview starts because George is such a great storyteller. He's telling me a story about calling a New York Times writer who wrote a review on art and copy and his commentary on George's part in the movie. Pretty interesting. Let's check it out. The foul mouthed George Lois. <laughs> the New York Times, right? The foul mouthed George Lois was by far the most interesting and also the most endearing. Yes. So I got, I called the guy, I forgot his name, and I said, George Lois, oh yeah, he said. I said, listen, uh, foul mouth, absolutely, no doubt about it. <laughs> interesting, sure. Sure, absolutely. And Jimmy, don't you fucking dare call me endearing. I don't what you mean by that. <laughs> you, you, you remember uh, a good fellas when uh, the order says to Pesci, oh, you're funny, that's funny, you're funny. And he says, Pesci said, you think I'm funny? So I'm saying, you don't, what do you mean by endearing? Are you, ch are you challenging my manhood? I mean, the guy was got going, uh, ooh, uh, uh. It's the guy at the Times you Oh got? yeah, no, the guy at the Times was like, uh, uh, oh. I mean, I was really reeling the guy in, you know. <laughs> See, that's what you do. <laughs> Pretty funny stuff. You do it personally, you do it with your advertising. Hella, you, you know Steve Heller? I said, well, Steve, I mean, do you have access to the, to the times where they have a bit, a bit oh. already written? They, they have a bit already written on a lot of people. Oh. And he said, yeah. You me mine? I said, well, could you check mine out? He said, huh? <laughs> I said, well, I'm not, not, if you can't do it, don't do it. Right. But maybe you can check it out and see if it's any good. I, I mean, I'm jerking this, his put there, and he said, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, and, he, and he hang up, I say, oh my God, I think, he, look I think he, he thinks I mean it. He calls me up three days later, George. I got, I saw the old bit, it's sensational. <laughs> I said, no shit. I said, I'll tell you what. He said, what? I said, could you make it even better? And he started to stutter and finally I said, hey, asshole. <laughs> 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 That's pretty funny. That's Here right. we go. Yeah. I, I thought we just did it. Okay. Yeah, no, this is, hey, that's I thought not we just. That's I thought we finished. We need structure. Yeah, yeah, get on the ball, get that camera going. <laughs> George, welcome to the Buzz Bubble. Thanks so much for coming yeah, down no, here. Yeah, I know it was only a, pleasure. Uh, a few blocks yeah. away. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Thanks I mean, for it was trip. a long trip. <laughs> the bitch. We're going we're gonna to jump right in, and I know um, I wanted to ask how you got started. I know you're, uh, you worked in your father's florist growing up, and then the next piece of information I find on your bio is that you're at uh, Bernbach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you fill well, in that uh, gap. Well, I, I was incredibly luck lucky. I mean, I, I, uh, I drew all the time, from the time I was five, three, four years old, I mean Drew, and I, by the time I was six or seven, I could draw. I mean, I could draw like, and when I was, time I was 12, I, this, I, I, it was like Michelangelo, I'm serious, I could draw. <laughs> and uh, so I drew, 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 drew. Uh, it, but I was incredibly lucky because I'm in public, PS7 in the Bronx, and I have a, there's an art teacher there, there was an art teacher by the name of uh, uh, Miss Engel, Ida Engel, and she came up to me one day, when I was 14, I guess I was just 14, she said, George, uh, do you have 10 cents on you to, to uh, take the subway to 135th Street and, and uh, Comet there when you were? I said, yeah, I, I, didn't need, I didn't need money to get on the train. I, I delivered flowers to my father. I never put a nickel or a dime <laughs> in, in my life. You know? um, she said, uh, go down, at, uh, you have to be there at 11 o'clock this morning. You take this portfolio with you. She had a portfolio that she bought, one of those black and opened it up, there was like a hundred of my drawings that she had kept. Wow. She said, go down to the high school of music and art, take a test, and uh, that's where you're gonna go to high school. You know, specialized, incredible high school. 
I didn't know anything about it when she right. told me about it. I went there, to, and it was the most, it was the greatest institution of learning since, uh, since Alexander sat at the feet of Aristotle. I mean, it was beyond belief. Really? I somehow got, uh, I went from a drawing, which I still obviously could do, somehow I got into, uh, into design. Got a design, really, in my first year. I think I was 14, and uh, the, teacher, the school was basically a Bauhaus. Uh, you know, it was 1945, so that was uh, right after, I mean, the war was just ending. Right. And the teachers were really uh, very influenced by the Bauhaus movement, so we were very lucky. And, um, you know, one of the courses at first, uh, the first year was a, a design course, kind of abstract design course. You uh, do a design of circles, you do a design of circles, and if you, if you were talented, you did better circles than other people. <laughs> right. Those but it was, kind of bull it was kind of bullshit, but I understand. <laughs> And then uh, a, 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 my teacher, we go into a class, and my teacher says, uh, Mr. Patterson says, come out 18 by 24 hunk of Strathmore paper. You know, I mean, it had to cost half a buck, big bucks back yeah, then. Yeah, right. And everybody got one. He said, okay, he said, what you do today will be half of your mark for, for the year. And today, it, we're concentrating on rectangles. You know, been there, done that. Right. I mean, you know, up to here, you know, it, you know, you did the, the knockoffs of Albers and uh, you know, and Malevich and the Kandinsky and all of the uh, all of the, uh, the pioneering the, um, uh, modernist designers. You know. So I just sat there for an hour and a half, and I didn't move. And I got the 18 by 24 sheet, and I'm really working her ass off. And he's walking around the room, and he's looking at me. He's seething. I don't mean he. I don't mean seething. I mean he was furious. He was turning red because I was a terrific student, and he's saying, what's he doing? And, he, and he's, then he, time's up, and you can see him biting his teeth, and he kind of, he's picking up the, he comes up to me, and he go, goes to grab it, and I say, hold it, and I signed my name in the corner of the rectangle. You know, and I gave him this pure rectangle. You know. He was still seething, I mean, he didn't get it. I said, oh my God. I didn't, he didn't get it, you know. <laughs> I mean, because it was like, a, I was making a statement. I was saying, what I had taught myself is that every problem has a surprise solution. Right. Including doing bullshit, you know. Doing well, you certainly got the biggest reaction. So what happened, so, so what happened is that I got there the next morning, I figured it was the last course, uh, last class in the day. And I'm walking down the hallway and two teachers come up to me, two other teachers come up to me. George, what you did in Mr. Patterson's class was brilliant. So he obviously went into the locker, locker room and he said, this, what the hell did this kid, George Lois, I mean, what do we think of him? He's a great student. What you still, what's he doing? He gives me this piece of, this 18 by 24 Strathmore, and he signs his name in the corner. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. You know, so, right. so, so somehow, Ding. somehow I taught myself, I, it was my own epiphany, I taught myself that every design problem is, you got a surprise. Right, right. You got a shock. Uh, and, and And that's my, in my philosophy, you, you know, on everything I do, you got a matchbook cover, you got a, you know, an ad campaign, you know, uh, you know, magazine cover. Um, yeah, everything, always shot. everything. Get a reaction. Everything, you got to do uh, design. A, I, I said in the class, uh, once I, uh, I get conned at the given class, I said in the class once, the given, you know, blah, 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 blah. you know, even the number on a, on a building should be a surprise. And I kept talking, I forgot about it. Two weeks later, I get, a, I get a, 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 some uh, a builder who's putting a building up at Times Square. Uh, he wants me to design a number. I said, Jesus Christ. Said, yeah. And I say, oh my God, this, this is hard. <laughs> right? Uh, you know, how do I shock, you know? Well, so I tangle. So I, so, I, so I did. It was 10 times square. It was 20 times square. So I did a, a beautiful two and the circle, you know, the, it was solid color. And then underneath the circle, I did a, I did this. And underneath that was a square, and and it took a second for maybe it took a second for people to get it, but it was twenty times, times square, square, you know. And I remember That's showing great. it. To, I remember showing it to them, and they looked at it. And they said, "I don't, I don't get it. That, 
oh my god <laughs> you, you know what i mean well, well yeah so, so the point is that's that's the the the, the, the driving theory on or a strategy on anything you do whatever the problem is you better be able to show somebody something and they better go holy shit eat holy shit and right. and if you don't and i tell students if you don't if they just look at it and uh, you're dead in the water. Maybe you, should, you shouldn't be a designer. That's it for part one of the Buzz Bubble with George Lois. Tune in next week for part two.